how to advise a deficit if not focusing on calories? I'm trying to make sure I understand the question correctly. So I got an awful lot of questions this week. I was I talk an awful lot about calories, saying they don't matter. I was telling them, I tell people at the moment that I'm I'm eating quite a lot of food at the moment, and a lot of people are they're basically giving me a lot of slack, saying to me, "There's no way you look that lean if you are eating about that much of food." You're either <laughs> you're either lying, you're, you're either lying, or you're, you're taking something. So <laughs> yeah. a lot of people are saying to me, okay, how are you going to get yourself into a deficit? Uh, and, and, just, and just so everybody knows, M- M- Mark is totally the most natural guy on the planet. <laughs> like to, to get him to start taking creatine was, 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 was a challenge. Yeah, no, he, he is, he is legit. Sorry. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically what I say to people is I just say, listen, look at calories as fuel. So you will be going into like a slight deficit when it comes to fuel but when it comes to overall calories, you're not going to be able to track calories because my calorie intake from my body weight at the moment, if I was to track calories, because I only weigh probably, I think I'm around 130 at the moment. So if I was to track my calories right now, I'd be on around 70 and 100. If I was on 70 and 100 calories right now, I'd be fucking starving, starving. My body, my body be going catabolic. But because I've built more muscle mass over the years, my bone density has gotten stronger. Um, my skeletal mass has gotten stronger, so that's the reason my body can absorb more calories. So I can, so I can, I know for a fact I'm eating way over, way over four thousand calories at the moment. And if anything, I'm actually looking leaner. So I know when I do go down to my stage weight, I I know I'll probably be quite lean. If I was to track calories, I'm probably about twenty five, twenty six hundred calories. It'll be, it remains to be seen, but I'm pretty sure. I'll be quite lean enough on around 2,600 calories. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be peeled. I'm looking at your sheet right now. You, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be peeled around 2,600 calories. But and I think it's going to be easy. We don't even know it's yeah, it's, it's not going to be as hard as what I was doing before because we've all been there. We've all done the bleeding cardio sessions. We've all done the seven days a week, the six meals a day, carbohydrates really, really high, and then... Yeah, you look good on the outside, but on the inside, you feel like shit. You look like shit as well. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So I'm definitely not going down that route again this year. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that, really. Just focus on macros. Um, people like Colt and Mark will rightfully adapt them to you if you are a client of theirs. Um, they'd use a tapered approach. You know, you don't need to drop to nothing straight, straight away overnight. Um, at the same time, you don't need to up cardio straight away overnight. Small changes you should do the job. Um, in terms of like, if you're not focusing on calories and not tracking them, um, you might just, for example, most of my diet plans, this is an inside little bonus coach's tip here. Um, I actually never include calories on any of my pl- plans that I give out to diets. Um, Colt now does the same. Um, but the same token, I also don't often put macros on it either. I just put out food because most of us that are doing the carnivore diet are eating ground beef, um, eggs, you know, chicken thighs. So I'll literally say, you know, one standard size chicken thigh, which yields, you know, say 60 grams of meat or whatever it is with the skin or say raw versus cooked weights. I'll say large egg versus small, you know, all these different things. Um, the other day, a 500 gram pack of beef mints is always going to be 500 grams. And if you're looking at the numbers on the packets all the time and worrying about that, You'll see, see oftentimes vastly different numbers for the same thing. Um, the labeling legislation allows 20% deviation either side of the amount that's, la- that's labeled. So it's in most countries. So I'd ignore what's on the label a lot of times. Focus on real whole foods if you're following the carnival diet. It's so much easier. Um, yeah, that's the way I do it. So, you know, most of my clients will be 500 grams, 80% lean, beef mince raw. Obviously, they'd cook it most of the time, I think. Um, 50 grams of butter, six eggs, 30 grams of cheese, you know, cheddar cheese or whatever they seem to like. Um, and that'll be it. Um, the numbers don't really come into it. The numbers are what I look at. Part of my job as a coach is to reduce the anxiety people have when looking at the diet itself. Now, if someone is out to eat, for example, um, they are perhaps a restaurant, they don't know what something is, I might then say, you know, have a 10 ounce ribeye or something like that. Or I'll give them the numbers and say, you know, try and fit this in for the day. Um, that's the that's sort of thing I use. It seems to be more appropriate because 
what I notice is people um, start to deviate away from the original diet plan, which is um, it's intuitively built in such a way that the foods themselves are specific as well. Um, for example, you know, not every pack of beef will be the same as a pack of salmon, assuming the labelled fat and protein content are the same. Um, as if I know they're sticking to a macro amount, at least what they're looking at the label might be somewhat accurate. Um, so that's kind of why the way I approach it. But yeah, it's, it comes down to food at the end of the day. Looking at portions of yeah. food that is going to be the ultimate uh, metric you can use, um, at least yeah. without testing in a lab. That's why I do it. Mm. And then the way, and then when you look at calories, you can see when when you see all these calories on packets, like they're not always they're not always accurate. I mean, if you see, I mean, if you look at like say one gram of fat equals nine calories, that could be like say eight eight point one eight eight point two. I don't know where they came up with this round number of nine calories. It could be, you know what I mean? It's the same with four calories per gram when it comes to carbohydrates. It could be 3.2, it could be 3.3. So they're never going to be accurate. So that's one thing we definitely need to move away from as well also. Yeah, yeah good job. Yeah, just, just, like you, 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 can, you can bust any any calorie label on anything at the store. It's just 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 multiply four, four gram. Uh, what one gram is four calories for protein? One gram is four calories for carbs. One uh, one gram is nine calories for fat, and it, and, it, and it doesn't add up to what's on the label either. So not only is yeah. it inaccurate in the first place, but there's a margin of error after that too. And calories don't even apply to the human body because it's not the because of the closed system. And F, I don't know how what, you 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 and, you and Bart can describe it ten times better than <laughs> me, Jonathan. You know where I'm going with that. And if yeah, you if you, if you look, yeah. If you if you just if you look at your energy output as well, like somebody that works in a building site to somebody that works stationary in the, or sorry sedentary in, in an office, you, there you you can see the difference. Like one person's energy levels are going to be burning off way more than the other person's. You know what I mean? So everybody's completely different. So yeah. just because you see something on YouTube and you're saying like, okay, this guy is eating two thousand calories, so I need to eat two thousand calories. No, you need to find out what, what your lifestyle is like first. What your like like Jonathan said, like what's your stress levels like? Well, like, what's your anxiety like? Are you depressed? Like what's going on in your life first of all, and then work around that first. Yep. I need to do a video on this exact topic. So basically, when we're losing fat, guys, um, we're effectively losing carbons from our body. We're breathing them out. Most of the weight we lose is from breathing. So. It doesn't. It doesn't just mean I'll oh, run run the treadmill for an hour and you know you'll breathe a lot, then you'll lose loads of fat. There's also 23 hours left in the day, so what you put into your body f from that fuel will also affect the amount of carbons that you exhale. Um, I need exactly. to do a video on this to properly explain it in a you know proper sort of sense. But yeah, that's um. Let, let me to, know when you do, man. Please. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a good one. Good four minute video. Of, well, say four, probably about 20 odd minutes. But cool. Hey, we got we got a new question here. It looks like um, I wanted to ask you one one thing real quick, Jonathan. Oh, sorry, yeah, Karen, yeah. That, that's all right. Okay, so um, the the way the the way that you explained intuitive eating right now, with without your clients know even even knowing um, how many um, how how much protein or how much fat is, is is in the food that they're consuming, that sounds wonderful. But you train competitors too, right? So what mm. so what happens if you have someone that's okay? So what what happens if you have someone that's eight weeks out from a show? I mean, their, their 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 own satiety signals are gonna lead them to being healthier, and getting down to three percent body fat isn't healthy. So, um, so so yeah, so I, I'd be I, making so I changes that point, from you, you get yeah. you get a lot more strict, right? Yeah, so I'd be more strict with it. So there's a deviation I allow for clients, and it'll be lifestyle clients versus um, competitive athletes. So, Colt, I'd say to you, today you are hitting 160 grams of protein and. 225 grand, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, the margin of error will be so low that I won't allow you to have that plus or minus five or 10 grams sort of thing. Um, now, when people are following the plans that I do, I prefer them to follow it as close as they can. It's tricky to do. Um, I'd estimate that most people I speak to have an adherence rate of perhaps 18 to 90%. Um, so it's not that high, but then you think not everyone I work with is going to be an elite bodybuilder sort of thing um people live lives they're so social creatures you know that's how we are as human beings so yeah um i'll provide more information to that client if they asked for it um if it means that they're more able to stick to the diet more with more adherent kind of fashion then yeah i'd give them the numbers i don't deliberately hold back the numbers in that sense but it's a case of eat the food on the list don't overcomplicate it um let me do the wiring you know mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I think that's a big. I think that's a big thing as well, isn't it? 
it take like overthinking. That's one thing I love. I love. I love. I love explaining to uh, clients as well. Like, like, let me take that overthinking away from you. A lot of people overthink when it comes to like nutrition, training, stress, all that kind of stuff. And I find that the best client is the person that literally just does exactly what you tell them to do. That's it. I'm quite fortunate in that case. For some, some of my clients, I'm like, mate, I couldn't adhere to this. <laughs> but um, not because yeah. it's challenging or like ir- ir- irrational or, in- or unreasonable to follow, but just because it's like there's gonna be days when I want like 35 grams of cheddar cheese versus 30 grams, you know, like ridiculous things like that. Um, 